Hi Chemistry, Mrs. KJ here going over 1.07 mixtures. Mixtures can be separated. Blood is an example of a mixture of different components. When someone has a blood test, the blood may have to be separated into its parts so that each part can be examined. In this lesson, you will learn about mixtures, types of mixtures, and how chemists can separate mixtures into pure substances. So mixtures can be separated by physical means. Examples are filtration, distillation, and chromatography. Mixtures have, that have even distribution are homogeneous. Mixtures that have uneven distribution, or think of like layers, are called heterogeneous. And you can click for the study guide, download that. Scientists need to understand and separate mixtures. If an athlete is being tested for use of a performance enhancing drug, the athlete's blood is sent to a lab where an analytical chemist performs various tests on the samples. Similar procedures are used when people have their blood tested for cholesterol or sugar levels. How can the chemist separate the mixture that is the athlete's blood? As you proceed through this lesson, you'll examine mixtures and then look at various methods that chemists use to separate them. Blood is a mixture. A mixture is a physical blend of two or more pure substances. Do you remember what your pure substances are? They are either elements or compounds. Specifically, blood is a complex mixture of cells, chemicals, dissolved salts, and water. So to identify any unusual chemicals or medicines present, the chemist would first have to separate that complex mixture into the pure substances that make it up. He will use one or more separation techniques and then identify those substances, both natural and artificial. So to the notes, I kept that first paragraph and I added the keyword mixture. Mixture is a physical blend of two or more pure substances. Remember, pure substances are the same throughout so they're either the elements or the compounds. Mixtures can be homogeneous or heterogeneous. So let's look at these words. We have the prefix homo and hetero. Homo means the same, hetero means different. So let's look at homogeneous or homogeneous mixtures first. Having uniform composition throughout. All right, so homogeneous mixtures have an even distribution of particles in them. Examples of homogeneous mixtures include solutions such as coffee, tea, and soft drinks. I like to think of this in terms of eating. So if you are going to eat or drink something that is homogeneous, every single bite is going to be the same. Okay, so your first drink of soda should be the same as the last drink of soda. Now, obviously, that's going to be different if you let it sit out for two hours and it had a chance for the gas to come out of the mixture, okay? But for the most part, the first drink is the same as the last drink. Tea and coffee, yes, I know you can add stuff to it, but as long as you stir it and have everything dissolved, the first sip is the same as the last. If you think of a Hershey's chocolate bar, the first bite is the same as the last. When you see same, it's homogenous. By contrast, mixtures whose components are unevenly divided are heterogeneous. So this time think of layers. Heterogeneous mixtures frequently consist of two or more phases. Think about chicken soup. Water, chicken, potatoes, celery, and carrots are all part of the homogeneous mixture we call chicken soup. So every single spoonful is not gonna be exactly the same. If you had enough time, you could physically separate all the parts that make up the mixture. All right, so if we look here, we have a homogeneous mixture. You can see that everything is evenly distributed. It's a really nice pattern. Here is heterogeneous. You can see that there's more of the orange in some areas, less in other areas. So homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures different in how their particles are distributed. So I added to our notes, when you think of heterogeneous, think layers or mixtures with different phases, example, Snickers bars or chicken soup. Homogeneous is uniform composition throughout. Think the first bite is the same as the last, so soda pop, Hershey's chocolate bars. Now, obviously, they're going to be giving you chemicals as well, which you would never eat, but you can still think about it the same. Is it the same everywhere, homogenous, or is it different in different areas, heterogeneous? Chemists separate mixtures by taking advantage of different physical properties of substances. Each substance within a heterogeneous mixture has different physical properties. For example, they have different density, size, boiling point, freezing point, absorbency, magnetism. 
chemists separate mixtures on the basis of these physical properties. For example, you separate oil from vinegar by just letting the mixture sit for a while. You could also cool an oil and vinegar mixture. The oil will solidify before the vinegar does because it has a higher freezing point. You could then just scoop the oil solids away from the liquid. Filtration can be used to separate a mixture if the particles have different sizes. A filter has tiny pores or openings in it. Particles smaller than the pore size will flow through, while those larger than the pore size will be trapped. All right, so we have different screens, and you can tell that the different screens have different sized holes. So they put it in the first one, and the largest molecules are stuck. Well, now the holes in this next screen are only one millimeter. So the next largest gets stuck. And then the next largest gets stuck. And the next largest gets stuck. And the liquid makes it all the way to the bottom. You might have forgot about the liquid. Don't forget about the liquid part when you are doing filtration. So it's simply using a filter, whether it's a screen or filter paper, like for coffee machines. And they use that in order to separate out the mixture. Our next method is distillation. Distillation separates mixtures on the basis of boiling point. Whereas filtration can separate heterogeneous mixtures, separating homogeneous mixtures may require different methods. One method, distillation, takes advantage of differences in boiling point. The mixture is heated and the component with the lowest boiling point vaporizes first, or boils first. The vapor, or the gas, passes through a condenser, so it's a tube that's cooled off, where it is cooled, liquefied, and collected in a receiving vessel. This method is called simple distillation and is good for separating solids from liquids or for separating liquids with large boiling point differences. Okay, so basically we're taking into account the fact that things are going to boil at different temperatures. So in our flask right here, we have a mixture and they're going to turn on so they turned on the Bunsen burner and now it's heating. You can see that they also have a thermometer in top because they're looking for when the boiling has started and when it has finished. Um, and they can tell that because the temperature stays the same when a substance is boiling. And then when it starts rising again, they know that that substance has completely boiled off. So they're boiling it right now and what's gonna happen is some of the molecules are gonna turn into gas. So one substance in here is gonna boil faster than the other going to turn into a gas, it's going to come up here, and then it's going to go down into this tube. So in this case, we just have solids left in the flask, and the rest of it boiled off, and as I said, it went up into here, and it's going to go down into this tube next. So gravity is obviously going to cause the gas to start falling down the tube. Now, if you notice, there's a light blue around the tube, and that's because cold water is coming in through this tube, and it goes around and it cools off the gas, which is in the center white tube. So it cools around the edges and then the cold water goes out here and it goes into the drain. So you're constantly getting really cold water to cool off this entire area, which cools off the gas that was inside the tube and it's gonna start dripping out the end. So here you can see because that gas cooled off, it became liquid again and then it starts to drip into the flask and then you can collect it and that's how distillation works. So I added to our notes under how to separate mixtures based on physical properties, and then I gave some examples of physical properties, density, size, boiling point, freezing point, absorbency, and magnetism. We have filtering based on size, and we have distillation, physically separating a solution based on boiling point. One substance boils first, becomes a gas. The gas is collected and cooled to become liquid again, but in a new container. Often used to separate a liquid from a solid as well. Now we're going to go on to fractional distillation. Fractional distillation separates liquids with narrow differences in boiling point. The heated mixture passes through a long column that has trays or plates inside. This type of column, it is the hottest at the bottom and coolest on the top. As the vapors pass through the column, components will condense at the place in the column where their boiling point is reached. Oil refining. Refining oil basically separates crude oil, a mixture of various hydrocarbons, into pure substances that are further processed for gasoline, jet fuel, and chemicals. One of the first steps in oil refining is fractional distillation, and oil refineries have huge fractional, fractional distillation columns. So I added fractional distillation, 
separates liquids with narrow differences in boiling point. The heated mixture passes through a long column that has trays or plates inside. In this column, it is hottest at the bottom, coolest at the top. Usually used when very exact separations are needed. So if you're doing a multiple choice and you're like, oh, is it distillation or fractional distillation? If it's something very specific, it's usually almost always fractional distillation. If it's a solid and a liquid, we just call it distillation. Or if it's two liquids that have very different boiling points, then we can just do standard distillation. Another type is chromatography. Chromatography is a separation technique based on the rate that parts of a mixture move through other substances. Mixtures can also be separated according to the rate that their components travel through a material in a process known as chromatography. As an example, in cr paper chromatography, a mixture is placed on paper. The paper is called the stationary phase, stationary meaning it doesn't move. One end of the paper is placed in a solvent such as alcohol. This solvent is called the mobile phase because, you guessed it, it moves. The mobile phase rises up the paper, carrying the mixture with it. Some components of the mixture travel farther up the paper than others. As the solvents move up the paper, the components of the mixture separate out at different heights on the paper. In other forms of chromatography, the stationary phase might be liquid or gas. The mobile phase, the part that moves, changes also in other types of chromatography. In column chromatography, the mixture, such as a dye, is placed in the stationary phase. The mobile phase, such as water or alcohol, moves down through a stationary phase, such as fine sand, and the different components of the mixture move at different rates. Okay. In this example, we have an example of column chromatography. So in this column, there is sand, and in this line at the top, they put some dye. And there's also some water in it as well. And the water is going to be our mobile phase or the part that's moving. The sand is the stationary phase. That's the part that stays still. And we're testing the dye or the ink. All right, so as water is added to the top and this is open, you can see the water is dripping down and that allows everything to move down. So the water is moving down through the sand as is the dye. And you can see that the dye, the ink, is starting to separate into its different components. You can see that it's made of a couple different colors and then they stopped it. They stopped it when it was about to turn green so that way they could collect just green. They stopped it when the green ran out as well. What do you think they're going to do next? All right, they're collecting more of the water. Remember, the water is the mobile phase that we're using to move it through. So they collected the red liquid. They're collecting the water in between. And again, collecting the blue liquid. And that way, you can further analyze all the different parts of your mixture that you had. And now that the process is complete, you can see that our mixture, the black ink, was separated into three different components, the blue, the red, and the green. Now, if you're wondering why it separates, the reason is that the different colors are moving at different speeds. So the green is moving the fastest. The blue is moving the slowest. So think about it. Which color has the smallest particle size? Well, it would be the green because it's moving the fastest. It can get around the sand very, very quickly. So it has the smallest particles and that's why it moves quickest. Whereas the blue is the biggest and so it's got to, oh, move out of my way, sand, right? And it's moving really slowly because it's really big, okay? And that is why the different parts of a mixture are going to move at different speeds. It has to do with the size of their particles. And so I added to our notes chromatography, a separation of substances in a mixture by differences in their attraction to a substance over which they are passed. So it can be based on their size. Like I said, smaller particles move faster. There's also different examples where it has to do with their properties of attraction. We're not going to get into those for now, but I want you to be aware that that is another way to do it. You have the stationary phase, 
the part that the mixture travels through, but the stationary phase itself does not move. So that would be the paper, the sand. The mobile phase. 